Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will discuss local shellcode injection. Malwares frequently use this technique to inject shellcode into their own process. In this video, we will discuss the flow of shellcode injection, the APIs used, the code used, and we will also see this in action in the debugger. With that, let's get started. So here I am in my virtual machine. Before we discuss the code of local process injection, let's go over the basics of code injection. The code injection usually has four processes, the allocation of memory, the copying of the shell code to that allocated memory, changing the protection and creating a thread which executes that allocated memory. We use virtual alloc or virtual alloc X to allocate memory in the local or the remote process. If it's the local process, then virtual alloc. If it's the remote process, then virtual alloc X. We use RTL move memory or write process memory to copy the shell code to the allocated memory. Okay. RTL move memory is usually used in case of a local process. However, we can use write process memory as well, but we try to avoid write process memory when possible so write process memory is only used whenever we want to copy shell code to a remote process virtual protect and virtual protect x are used to change the protection of the allocated memory to allow a read and execution when a memory is allocated using virtual alloc or virtual alloc x we usually allocate memory with the read write memory protections so in order to allow the execution we have to use virtual protect to change the protection to read and execute. Then we use create thread or create remote thread to execute the memory where the shell code is copied. The use of create thread and create remote thread depends upon where the memory has been allocated. If it's allocated in a local process, then we use create thread. If it's allocated in a remote process, then we use create remote thread. Now let's look at the code. I have created a project and i've added some code here let's go over to our main function in the main function we're calling threaded execution let's go to this function if you go to this function we have an array being declared over here this array contains the shell code to execute calculator and this shell code was creating using this msf command so if you copy this msf venom command here and paste it in the terminal so this is an SSA session to a Kali box. I will paste the command here and we can see the payload being generated. Now, what does this command do? It starts off with MSF Venom. Then we say that we want the command to allow us to execute uh, a command on the Windows box. This is uh, shown by the Windows x64 exec. Then the command is going to be calc.exe. We want to say that at the exit, we want to exit the thread. Uh, the shell code has to be 64 bit. The format has to be C and the variable has to be T payload. So this is how we are given the uh, shell code. I have already copied the shell code and pasted it here. Let us now execute this code in the debugger and i will show you how i set up the debugger to watch the memory allocations as well so let's go to debug windows in fact let's start the debugging first and then i will go to debug windows it will be memory and memory one and i will take this memory one from here and i will put it here okay this is the memory and i can change the columns to 16 all right okay and i can watch the locals as well now let's go forward and let's execute virtual alloc virtual alloc has been executed this is the executable memory so i will copy the value and i will put it here okay right now it is empty now let's see what happens I have a couple of get chars over here. Uh, so let me press a key. Log message. RTL move memory. This will move the shell code to the executable memory. So we'll see the shell code getting populated over here. We can see the shell code has been populated here. I have another call to get char. So I will do that. 
and next up we are changing the protection so that's fine we have another get char it's fine let's move forward and now we have the execution if i press continue here i will see the calculator now let's build this in release and i will show you how the protections are changing as well so let's rebuild this and release okay and let me open up this release open folder x64 release copy go to the desktop and paste this here replace okay now let's execute this in the debugger and see what happens drag and drop local process injection x64 dpg yes okay press play i'll press play until we hit the first get char so press play again and i think we've hit that we have the executable memory location here so let me copy this and let's go to the expression here control v okay now let's review the permissions of this memory so go to follow in memory map if you go here follow in memory map this is actually not right so the memory has been allocated here 18a something let's call in memory map okay this one this is the allocated memory and this is read and write okay this is read and write right now so press enter here copying payload to the allocated memory we can see that the pay payload has been copied to the allocated memory press enter again setting memory protections so if i go right click here follow in memory map we see that this has been selected here now it has become executable and uh, read permissions are also there now if i press enter again we have the calculator open okay so that was a quick way of how we can debug this code as well to understand what is going on now let's go and look at this code further okay i have another function over here which is direct execution of the shell code what is the difference the difference is everything is the same except for how the shell code is executed instead of create thread or create remote thread we are going to directly jump to this executable memory like it's a function okay now there is another thing that is different here the way this payload has been generated because we are not creating a separate thread we have to make sure that uh, we don't have exit is equal to thread over here because that function will not be valid and will most probably create a crash of the application which is why we have to remove that and just create a plain and simple shell code okay let us see that in action as well so i will comment out threaded execution allow direct execution press play here and we have the calculator open okay so that was a quick overview of the code how we can understand it how we can debug it i invite you to try this in your own lab as well i will share the location of the code on my github in the description that brings us to the end of this video thank you very much for your time